external factors or anything that can happen in the wider world or anything that happens outside of the business that starts to impact upon the business. Now, while the business may have little or no control over these external factors, there is little doubt that these factors do start to impact upon the way a business operates and the decisions a business makes in order to respond to the changing external environment. Now, there's a model we use in National Five and Higher Business to look at external factors, and we call it the PESTEC model. And PESTEC stands for Political, Economic, Social, Technological, Environmental, and Competitive. This is quite simply just a way of breaking down all the things that happen in the world into six little topics that we can look at one by one. Um, we're going to look at them one by one in accordance with the PESTEC model. Um, and there's two things we really need to focus on is what is the change that's going to happen and how is it going to impact the business? Um, and so we'll start by looking at political. Now, political factors are any decision that the government makes. And obviously, that's going to be a wide range of decisions. So there's only going to be two that we're going to focus on. Um, the first is a change in any laws uh, in the country. So the government can decide to introduce new laws or they can decide to perhaps remove some laws if they think they're a bit too strict. But regardless of the law that's changed or introduced, the business would have to adjust their operations um, to accommodate that. So the business, the government may decide to introduce a new law. The business is then going to have to perhaps hire some lawyers or talk to some managers and decide how are they going to have to change the way they do things to make sure they comply with that new legislation the government releases. The second thing a government could do is start to change the rate of corporation tax. And the corporation tax is from a business's profits, how much do they then pay to the government? Obviously, if corporation tax were to increase and get higher, perhaps from 20% up to 25%, this would mean the business is paying more of their profits to the government and therefore has less profit left over to keep for themselves. The alternative is also true. The government may decide to reduce corporation tax from 20% down to 15%. At this point, the business is paying less towards the government and gets to keep more of their profits for themselves. Um, now, if something happens, such as an increase in corporation tax and a business is going to make less profits, they may then have to respond to that by doing something like increased prices. So they may try and increase their prices to try and keep their profits quite stable. Alternatively, they could perhaps look at cutting their costs to try and again keep profits quite stable. Um, but a business is going to respond to a change in tax, firstly by having a, a changed profit figure and then hopefully making some decisions to try and maintain their current profit levels or increase them year on year. Second factor we're going to look at is economic now again multiple economic factors we could look at but we're just going to zone in on two and that's unemployment and economic growth now when we say unemployment that's the number of people in a country who are looking for a job but are currently unable to get a job um, so this means it doesn't include people that are under 16 and are unable to get a job it doesn't necessarily include people who are um, severely disabled and unable to perform a job it employ it applies to everybody who wants a job and can do a job but is unable to get one um, now, if unemployment was really high, that would mean lots of people were looking for jobs but couldn't get one. At that point, they may be on benefits, they may not have much income, and so businesses are going to start to see a fall in sales. So if unemployment is really, really high, customers don't have as much money to spend because they don't have jobs, and so we may start to see a fall in sales as a business. That means we, as a business, may have to reduce our prices to attract some customers. Uh, on the other hand, if unemployment is really low, that means loads of people have got jobs, and if lots of people have jobs, lots of people have income. And if people have income, they will spend it. And that means businesses may see an increase in sales. The other thing is economic growth under the title of economic factors. Economic growth just responds to how much our economy is expanding each year and getting better. If the economy is growing at a really high rate, we might call that a boom. That means the economy is doing really well. However, if economic growth was decreasing and the economy was actually shrinking, we would call that a recession. Um, one thing this does is it affects the confidence of consumers. So if your economy is booming and your country is known to have really high economic growth, customers are really confident. And they're, because they're confident, they're really happy to spend money. They know that their country is doing well. And so they know that if they spend money, they'll still be fine. Their job will be safe and they'll always have their monthly income. So under good economic growth and an economic boon, customers are happy. Customers are spending a lot of money. Alternatively, under an economic recession, Customers have very little confidence. They're starting to worry a little bit. And because they're worrying, they're maybe not spending as much money. Businesses would then have to, or would expect to see a decrease in sales. Moving on to look at social factors. 
social factors are just a change in our population or a change in people's attitudes or interests. Um, and again, loads of things we could look at here, but we're going to zone in on two. Firstly is the change in age. So the UK, for example, has an aging population. What that means is that the average age of people in the UK is increasing. Because of that, we may have to change the products we offer. If we have a significant amount of customers over the age of 60 and much fewer customers under the age of 30, then that would mean that we'd maybe have to adjust our products to make sure we're selling plenty of products that are going to apply to a market of people that are older than 60. So we're gonna to have to make sure our products offered apply to the age of the population. Likewise, people may see a change in interests. For example, more people may be interested in eating healthily, or more people may be interested in um, consuming vegan options. And as a result, businesses, again, have to change the products they offer to suit people's changing interests. We see this as a real life example with McDonald's. Um, more and more people looking for plant-based options. And so McDonald's, whilst it still sells its Big Mac and its McChicken sandwich and its quarter pounders and McNuggets, they now have the McPlant. And that's the idea of people having changing interests and McDonald's changing the products they offer to suit those changing interests so they can continue to attract customers. The next factor we're going to look at is technological factors. Really simply, this is just the idea that technology is constantly improving. We will expect to see improved technology in terms of machinery and equipment every single year. Um, if the business fails to invest in new technology, then they could perhaps fall behind in terms of productivity and efficiency to their competition. They may also be making a lot of mistakes when they're making their products because their machinery is not good enough. So what a business really has to do is make sure they have the best technology that their finance can buy. If they have that, so they purchase that or they perhaps lease the best machinery and the best technology, then at least we will have industry leading productivity, industry leading quality, and be able to keep up with our competition. So technology will improve. And what we have to do in a business is find a way to invest in that technology to make sure that we stay competitive. Next, we're moving on to environmental factors. And this can mean two things. It can mean the environment itself in terms of things like weather, but it can also mean people's attitudes towards how a business deals with the environment. Um, so we're going to look at one here, and that's weather is a really good example in terms of environmental factors. And obviously, if weather is really bad, so for example, heavy snow or storms or hurricanes, that starts to disrupt the transport of our goods. So perhaps you've ordered something from suppliers. Those suppliers have experienced poor weather in their area, and they're unable to deliver. At that point, we have no products to offer to customers because our suppliers haven't delivered, and our customers are starting to get dissatisfied. Um, as a business, you may have to try and find an alternative supplier. Um, it could also be something along the lines of poor weather in your area, it means customers aren't coming to use your product. Um, and as a result, you're starting to see a fall in profits and you're maybe gonna to have to try and adjust your business model to deal with that weather. It can also affect the products that businesses decide to offer. So for example, ice cream may be extremely popular in the summer months, however, it may not be quite as popular in the winter months when it's a little bit colder. So you have to make sure that depending on the weather, your products suit the weather that is currently going on in your area. Secondly, we've got people's attitudes towards the environment. Um, more and more people care um, about the impact that businesses are having on the natural resources and the planet that we live on. Um, if you do find that your customers are perhaps leaving because your practices aren't sustainable environmentally, then what that just means is that you have to find a sustainable way of operating your business. That could be moving from diesel vehicles to electric vehicles. It could be making sure that instead of you use fewer plastics and you use more cardboards and papers which are recyclable. Um, so that's again just making sure that you adjust your operations and adjust your products as your customers are looking for more environmentally sustainable options. The last external factor we can look at is competitive factors. Um, two things we're going to look at here. It could be that competitors start to reduce their prices. Um, obviously, if competitors reduce their prices, some of your customers may leave and go to your competitors, and you're going to lose a little bit of market share. A customer's picking the cheaper option. You're losing those customers to your competition. What you could do as a business is just match that price, and you can make sure that your prices remain in line with your competitors. So if they drop their price from two pounds to one pound, then you may also have to reduce your price down to around that one pound area to stay competitive. Or it could be that loads of new firms and new businesses are entering your market. Perhaps 
you were previously the only coffee shop in the area. However, now we see an influx of three or four new coffee shops. At that point, what you might have to do as a business in order to not lose all your customers to this new competition is start to run more promotions. That could be more adverts, um, more discounts, more social media posts. Um, any sort of promotion to make sure that people are aware of your business are convinced to continue to use your business. Um, so as we'll see, six different external factors, all things that happen outside of the business, the government changing the laws and taxes, um, the economy doing well or poorly, uh, people's interests changing, technology improving, the environment around us changing, or competitors entering the market, all things our business cannot control. However, our business 100% can respond to those things. They can decide to adjust their operations to make sure that they're complying with new regulation in terms of political factors. They can reduce prices to make sure that even in areas of high unemployment, there's still an affordable option for people. They can make sure that their products are offered based on the social interests of people in their area. They can purchase or lease the new technology to make sure they remain competitive. They can ensure that they sustainably source their products so that people who care about the environment are still attracted to the business. And they can make sure that if there's competition new to the area, that they run adequate promotion to make sure that they remain in the minds of their customers and they're convinced to buy their customers' products. So really important that we know these six external factors. We know the definition for these six external factors. We know how they can impact upon businesses. And we know how businesses can respond to the changing external environment.